My name is Joshua Burks, and this is Emmaus Presents. Welcome and thanks for joining us for part five of our discussion on the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. This video will be looking at the fourth and the fifth Beatitude in Matthew chapter five. Let's go ahead and begin by reading the first. It's found in Matthew chapter five, verse six. It reads as follows. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Who are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness? When I read this beatitude, I immediately think of someone like Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She was someone who had a true hunger and a true thirst to live in right relationship with the Lord. She yearned for this right relationship so much that she took a personal oath that she would never disobey the Lord under penalty of sin. I know that I could never do that because I am frail and I fall short of what God wants me to do every single day. But someone with the courage and the virtue of Mother Teresa truly embodies this beatitude as one who hungers and thirsts for the righteousness of God to live in right relationship with him. This beatitude goes on to say that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied. Those who hunger and who thirst to live in a relationship with the Lord will be satisfied by living in a relationship with him. And nothing will hold us from the love of Jesus Christ when we yearn to live in right relationship with him. When I read the end of this beatitude, I think of a passage from St. Paul in Romans at the end of chapter 8. And he says this, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. St. Paul is saying nothing in God's green creation can hold us from the love of Jesus Christ. But what he doesn't add in that list is you and me. The only thing that truly keeps us from a relationship with Jesus Christ is ourself. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who yearn to live in a relationship with the Lord, their prayer will be answered. Jesus is dying to live in a relationship with us. How are we going to respond? By hunger and by thirst to live in a relationship with him. Notice the beatitude doesn't say, blessed are those who nibble and sip for righteousness. No, these are powerful descriptive words on how we yearn to live in a relationship with the Lord. Do we hunger for him? Do we thirst for him? Because then he will fulfill our hunger and he will quench our thirst with his very presence. Let's go ahead and look at the second beatitude in our discussion today. It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. It reads, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Now remember, the Beatitudes are like links in a chain that build upon one another. So the Beatitude that we were just discussing had to do with righteousness. Well, another way for translating the word righteousness is justice. So the Beatitude of mercy follows the Beatitude of justice. Well, what is mercy? Mercy gives more than what justice demands. If someone owes me $10, it would be just for them to give me $10 because that is what is owed. But if they gave me more than $10, if they gave me $11, $20, $100, that would be merciful because it goes beyond the demands of justice. Likewise, God's love and God's goodness toward us go far beyond what we deserve from him. God does not owe us his love. He doesn't owe us anything. But his steadfast love is a merciful love. So we are invited to share in that merciful love by extending it to others. And when we extend that merciful love to others, we'll receive the love of God all the more. Because that is the nature of a spiritual gift. In the economy of the world, whenever we give of a material possession, we lose that material possession. If I give you a slice of pie, I lose a slice of pie. If I give you $10, I lose $10. But that is not how the kingdom of heaven works. 
It is the nature of spiritual gifts that the more that I give of something, the more I receive it. And so I do not lose out on God's mercy or I do not lose out on God's love whenever I give mercy and love to others. Rather, when I give mercy or when I give love to others, I possess mercy and I possess the love of God all the more. So in this beatitude where Jesus tells us how to live out his blessing in the kingdom of heaven, let us be ones who show mercy to our neighbors. Let us be ones who show love. It is then that we will receive God's mercy and we will receive God's love all the more. Thanks for sharing this time with me today on our discussion with the Beatitudes. Please look for our next video as we discuss the sixth Beatitude. God bless. Mm -hmm.